All right, good morning, guys. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I have been trying to fix a few things. Like, I don't know, like, there was a lot of things opened on the computer and the computer was really too slow. <coughs> so, um, how's everyone? Um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start, okay? Do you guys hear me? Uh, all right, perfect. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and uh, start start today's today's lesson. Um, so uh, today we will be talking about like circular motion and the laws of universal gravitation. Um, this is our fifth chapter, um, and it's. Um, it's part of a uh, week four material. Um, so the objective of this chapter, we will mainly focus on uh, a few new items and new physical concepts, such as centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. Uh, and we'll try to, um, you know, discuss a little bit of Newton's law of universal gravitation. Uh, this Newton's law of gra universal gravitation has nothing to do with the other three ones. This is also, I mean, what I mean is like, it's a new one. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll apply uh, the equations of Newton's universal gravitational uh, law and we'll try to, to, for instance, calculate the, um, the, the Earth's mass or if the mass of the Earth is given or if the mass of a certain planet is given how can you determine the gravitational acceleration? You know, remember the 9.8 meter per second square on the surface of the Earth, uh, that kind of stuff. Okay, so therefore, those are the main objectives of uh, the topic. Um, then, like, what is a circular motion? Uh, a motion that involves literally like something in a circular path. Um, it can be like a rotating tire, as you can see here or it can be like some kind of uh, call it a canonical pendulum. It's like a pendulum, but at the same time, instead of swinging back and forth, if it makes like a circular motion, then that is a good example of a circular motion. Okay. Uh, you know, a clock, you can consider that as a circular motion. Uh, Earth orbiting around its axis, as you can see here, that's a very uh, good example of circular motion. Uh, a Ferris wheel, if you are uh, sitting on a Ferris wheel and, and you know, um, then you experience a circular motion, okay? Uh, but you know, sometimes like when you are in, well, when you are on a Ferris wheel, uh, you may, you may, ex you may experience, um, like for instance, a feeling of lighter when you are at the top of the Ferris wheel and feeling of like heavier than yourself when you are at the bottom of the ferris wheel we'll try to uh, to explain this like you know from from physics standpoint okay um so you know the same goes with um with a roller coaster if you are sitting on a roller coaster and then when when a roller coaster passes at the pickest point right what you feel is like you are lighter at that point but when it goes into the valley um or into the trough of the path uh, then you may feel heavier than yourself okay um, so why uh, then that can be really explained in in, in physics okay uh, so now um, you know centripetal acceleration we already defined what acceleration is okay uh, Acceleration is the rate of change in velocity. That means change in velocity divided by uh, time, right? So uh, then, but what is centripetal acceleration? What makes it a little different from the one that we saw in the previous uh, two, three chapters? So something that you need to pay attention here is uh, a centripetal acceleration, it's an acceleration uh, but at the same time, it's experienced while the magnitude of the velocity is constant. Okay, we're going to focus on only when the velocity is constant. I mean, the magnitude. So you 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 may claim that like, how come someone experiences if velocity is constant? Because you remember, like in the previous chapters, like you know when 
when our the understanding of the material is like you know to the basics what we were saying is like if i am walking in a straight line or if a car is moving in a straight line with a hundred miles per second uh no that's too much a hundred meters per second that's even high too a hundred meters per second or 10 meters per second at a constant uh, velocity like in a straight line then what we said is acceleration is zero okay acceleration is zero so the acceleration that we were talking about is like either like in this direction or you know gravitational acceleration which is mostly towards the center of the earth okay so those are the two types of acceleration that we were talking about but in in, in today's in today's lecture we're going to try to come up with a new kind of acceleration centripetal acceleration the centripetal acceleration happens like this how so if a car instead of moving like let's say 60 miles per hour in a straight line what if that car travels in a circular path at a constant speed so let's say like constant speed i mean like let's say the car is it's is moving like this in a circular path when it reaches here you know let's say 10 meters per second that's that's what its magnitude of the velocity is when it reaches here it's moving in a circular path as i said it's still 10 meters per second when it reaches here it is 10 meters per second so something that you need to keep in mind here is like the magnitude of the velocity is is constant i mean the magnitude the magnitude means the number look 10 10 10 but if you look at the direction the direction is different what do you mean by that here the direction is it's moving in the north direction let's see up up is not north but it's in the north direction when it reaches here it's in the west it's in the west direction when it reaches here the car's direction is south okay so we as we said it like velocity is a vector quantity so the direction is important okay the direction is important so if direction is important that means when the vector even though the number is the same as you can see in this diagram if the direction changes then there is a change in velocity there is a change in velocity as we know acceleration as you know change in velocity which is the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by you know the time between those two changes if this is your initial velocity and if this guy is your final velocity they are not equal because this vector guy it's it's a vector quantity being a vector quantity whenever you have a vector quantity unless they are in the same direction as we saw in 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 forces when the force applies one to the left one to the right then you just take one minus the other if both are in the same direction you add them but if the direction is different like if one is in the north and the other one is in in the east you cannot just simply add them the same thing applies here so once again look at this diagram if you look at this diagram this blue thing you, know, you can imagine that's a car or something it's 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 revolving around a circular path with five meters per second but the direction is always changing okay always changing you know this 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 velocity you may call it the tangential speed which is because it's tangent to the path it's changing but that change is not because of the number that change is because of direction okay so in general there is a vector explanation for that but it can go a little beyond the scope of this class but you know if you do those red arrows and then if you bring them to connect to each other to add vector addition 
you will see that there is a certain a certain change in velocity so in, in in general just take it this as there is a change in velocity when when a car is moving at five meters per second in a circular path then as a result what happens is like there will be an acceleration because of that change in direction so this acceleration is due to change in direction as the car moves at a constant rate okay so keep this in mind you know you, you can you can write it as your note or something this is you know due to change in direction okay you know the derivation of the, the equation normally involves a higher level of physics but change in direction this velocity is due to change in direction okay and since this acceleration is a vector quantity then it has its own direction you can find it the magnitude of the acceleration is like this the magnitude of the acceleration is like this but its direction is always always towards the center the direction is always towards the center so if someone asks you like what is the magnitude of what is the magnitude of acceleration or gravitational acceleration you can find it like this but if someone asks you like what is the direction then the direction is always towards the center okay so um, keep that keep that keep that in mind um, if there's a question let's see yes are the radius um, so it's going to come to the definition very good so then this is the magnitude of the acceleration this ac represents centripetal acceleration v represents like the speed at which that object is making making the circular pass and r is the radius of the pass Okay, the radius of the path. All right, all right. So now, what would be the SI unit? And the SI unit is very clear because we are finding acceleration anyway. Then the SI unit of acceleration is meter per second square. So the same goes for centripetal acceleration. Then the acceleration is going to be the same. Okay now now for instance uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question um, if there is acceleration that means there is a net force acting on the object if there is centripetal acceleration then there will be centripetal force then maybe maybe the centripetal force may help us explain a little bit of like what the direction of the centripetal acceleration is. We already say the centripetal acceleration's direction is towards the center of the circle or towards the center of the path when that object is you know, making the re the revolve, the, you know, the rotation of the so as you can see here like this blue blue bead, it's 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 moving in a circular path. Then its acceleration okay this is what the direction of the centripetal acceleration is. You can find the magnitude, as we said, as using V squared over, over R, where R is the radius of the path. This is what R is. Now, if you have a net force towards the center of, towards the, center of the circle or the path, right? This is represented by, by the rate. So therefore, you have a force because according to Newton, Newton's second law, you know, net force is equal to, I mean, or acceleration is equal to net force over mass, right? So therefore, if you have a centripetal force, then there has to be like a net centripetal force. If there is a centripetal acceleration, there is a net centripetal force. Then, then the directions are are pretty much in the same direction. So now 
Let's talk about the centripetal force. Maybe that centripetal force may give us a little bit of like certain idea. So, you, you, as you can see here, um, you know, take take a string and attach a small mass to the string. Okay, and then whirl it around a circular path. Okay, you know, when you whirl that thing in a circular path, right? If you fill it, right? What happens to the string? The string that is holding the mass, right? It's going to be taut, right? Right? It will be in tension. It's, you, you can feel it. It just constantly tries to, you know, tries the mass, when the mass tries, tries to run away, right? When the mass tries to run away, when you are whirling it, right? Then the string wants to keep it. When the mass reaches here, string still keeps it towards the center. When the mass tries to keep it, I mean, when the mass tries to escape, again, the string keeps it. So it's the string that keeps this object to revolve around. String, string. So the string that is holding the mass, it's keeping it in in motion. You, you can feel it like, you, you know, nowadays most of you have, I'm sure, like an earphone, right? I mean, of course, the one, the, not the wireless, of course, uh, but, but the one with, with wire, uh, like, you know, there's a little mass there, right? You know, the, 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 the one that goes to the ear, the earbud part. If you hold that, because it's a small mass, you know, it's heavier than the string. If you if you whirl your 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 earphone like in a circular path, you know it can be in a vertical direction or it can be in the horizontal direction. If you whirl it, you'll feel that like there is a tension in the string. The string gets taut. Okay, it gets taut. So why that is happening? Because the little small mass, or in your case, the small earbud wants to run away because you are trying to whirl it, right? So it just wants to break away from the string and run away. But the string is keeping it always, keeping it to to stay in that rotational motion. And it's always tries to keep it towards this, towards your, your finger, towards where that object is holding it. Okay. So therefore, the force in the string is keeping the little mass in balance or checked so that it keeps on revolving around the circular path without breaking away and you know so that that tension in the string that you feel that keeps the little mass in a circular path is known as centripetal force is known as centripetal force so that centripetal force is towards the center. Otherwise, like if it wasn't towards the center, then the mass will will run away. Okay. So I can give you another example of centripetal force. So you can imagine you're like, and then you know, like you can imagine like this is this is a road, flat road. And there's a small car. Okay. Traveling in, in, in this circular path. Okay. On a nice summer day, that's guaranteed. On a summer, nice bright day, it's guaranteed that the car will just simply drive in that straight path. Imagine there is a black ice on the street. Okay. There's a black ice on the street. That means he can imagine there is no friction. There is no grip between, between the tire and tire and, and the road. What would happen? What would happen? Definitely the car definitely the car is going to go like this straight 
no matter how strongly you try to negotiate the road like you can't stop it that's why like in, in a black eyes like if it is a circular path there is a guarantee that the car is not going to move i mean it's not going to negotiate with the road so that like you can make like that nice turn rather you are going to go straight and then crash because in this curved path if it is icy then there is nothing that keeps the car But on a nice summer and clear road, you have the friction force between the tire. And there is a frictional force between the tire, between the tire and in the road that keeps you in balance. Aha, you may see, look, look what happened now. Here, you may ask me like, here, you said, the string force provided the centripetal acceleration. Here on the road, you are saying frictional force is providing providing the centripetal force. So isn't it like some kind of a confusion? Like then at some point you may come and say uh, or tell us like oh gravity is providing the centripetal force so what is this centripetal force some days it's friction some days it's the string some days it's gravitational force okay so for this the answer is simple centripetal force is not a type of force it's a neural of force okay so it's, it's it's not by itself it's not like gravity gravity is a gravitational force that's because of the uh, this pull friction friction is a frictional force it's a type of force that happens between two surfaces whereas centripetal force the definition is like simple it's a role of force it's a new role of force but by itself it's not really a type of force that you can explain as as, as the gravitational force in the other forces, okay? Um, Alright. Inertia, oh, that's a good question. I mean, inertia, you may say the inertia is keeping it to drive off of the road. Uh, but, but the thing is, it's not only the inertia that really makes it. If there's not any grip between the tire and the fuel, then then there's no there's no way that you can stop the car okay so but but something that you need to keep in mind is like uh it's not centripetal force it's not really a type of force by itself like right so but it is just uh, a role of force it's a new role for for a force okay? um, so keep that in mind It's, um, it's, 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 a, it's a very interesting kind of force. I mean, I just like to discuss this like a lot. Um, you know, sometimes uh, you may say like, yeah, there's in some occasions, as I said, like um, centripetal force can be provided by gravitational force. I mean, you, you know, you, you can imagine like, for instance, in, in some moments, like you may say, uh, uh, Loop, loop the loop I think they call it loop the loop kind of uh, it's a kind of um, you know daredevils do do it like such what you know those are like these people are like in a motorbike or something and you know and then they drive their the motor their motorbike in a circular path like this and then they loop it they loop it like this and they drive safely okay but you can imagine that like those 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 motorcycles are driving at a very fast rate, right? So when reached when they reach here, what keeps them down? What is not really making them like to fly off like this is gravity. Okay. If they slow down, then gravity is no longer their friend. They are going to drop straight, right? They have to move fast. But when they move fast, they may go off of right but if as far as there is like 
you know, if this is a pad, if this is a road, then to some extent the road is going to push them, but that push they are earning, it's because of due to the presence of gravity. And then gravity will pull them like, and then they keep them in, in a safe pad, okay? They, they, they do those kind of things like that. Of course, you know, what is the physics behind? What keeps them to loop, uh, the loop safely? Um, you know, that's because of the centripetal force, okay? Uh, so, uh, there is there is an interesting question, like, uh, the, um, be before we go ahead and then, like, do the um, the exercise or something, uh, in, in, in your textbook, uh, there, is, there is Q1, uh, so I'll try to probably, you know, draw it, and uh, on my thing, so the uh, the question is like this: If, if you look at here, um, then what is happening is like uh, someone is uh, someone is whirling a rock attached to a string, kind of. You know, it says a ball on the end of a string is whirled with a constant speed in a counterclockwise horizontal circle at point A, then, so here's the bar. If you have your textbook, it's the question Q6, okay? So those are conceptual questions. Um, so what happened is like, this is point A, and there was a string that was holding this guy, and then when it reaches so the person who was whirling this ball was his his hand was here and and then this guy broke over here. So it says the string broke. Then then the question is the following. Uh, so what it says is let me, let me use a different color. So the question is like, then, you know, there is one, number one is like this, uh, number two is like this, and number three is like this, and number four is like this. So. As you can see here, like, you know, the one that I wrote in, in red colors. So the question is like this, which of the curves sketched in the diagram most accurately represent the path of the ball will take after the string breaks as shown. So if the string breaks, like in what direction will you think like the ball will fly off? The ball has a mass so you know if you if you if you collect given parameters I'm going to collect them for you. It says like its mass it has a mass of fifty gram. This will be what what value how much would it be in kilogram? It will be zero point zero five kilogram. Okay. And is revolving at the end of a string in a circular, uh, in a circle with the radius. So the radius of the path is 40 centimeter, uh, which would be 0 0.4 meter, right? Then the ball moves at the speed of, then now it has that constant speed, which is 2.5 meters per second. Okay. Um, all right. So, what is the centripetal acceleration? So the first required parameter you are asked to find is a centripetal. How much would it be? Okay, I'm going to give you like two minutes, then then give me your answers. How much would be the centripetal acceleration? So pick the right equation and then try to solve it. Okay, so you know your solution just comes down to uh, yes um, 
uh, that value. So it, it so the first thing is it's being wheeled in a circular path at a constant rate of two point five meters per sec per per second square. I mean per second. So therefore, centripetal acceleration can be calculated as uh, so. Your centripetal acceleration value is going to be v squared, which is two point five um, uh, square. When you square it, keep in mind your your unit will also be squared with it. Then divided by the radius, which is that. Okay. So therefore, you know this one meter cancels out with that meter. Then your acentripetal is going to be. You simplify that, and then. Uh, plug in the numbers just in your calculator, therefore you will find 15.625 meter per second square, okay, because it's acceleration, so therefore its unit is that, okay. So this is part A, and then now I'm going to give you 30 seconds to answer question B. Question B says, what is the horizontal component of the tension needed to produce this acceleration? So that means this acceleration means the centripetal acceleration. What is so indirectly you are asked to find how much is the centripetal for that? That's creating that. of the mass, uh, the mass was 50 gram, which is equivalent to 0 0.05 kilogram. So now we're going to go to Newton's second law. Great. Yeah, that's the answer. So according to Newton's second law, what we said is like acceleration is directly proportional to the net force divided by, by the mass, right? So but now the acceleration is known and a, we represented it as AC. This is um, AC centripetal acceleration. Okay, so just to avoid any confusion. Okay, and of course FC is centripetal force. Okay, so as the name implies, centripetal means center seeking. Okay, center seeking. Okay something that is looking for or looking towards the center that's what it means so from this equation then your fc will be m times ac okay since we already found acceleration center beta then the we're just simply plugging the number 0 0.05 kilogram multiplied by 15 point six to five meter per second squared so therefore your centripetal force is it's going to be 0 0.78 something something you know two decimal places should be enough um, of newton okay um, so your answer is this all right so sometimes like you may be asked to find the the centripetal force you know, without finding the centripetal acceleration, then you know you can apply the formula directly. For instance, uh, you know that we already said if uh, we use a different color, maybe a blue one. If centripetal is equal to mass times a centripetal, that's directly from Newton's second law. So, but if you substitute like a centripetal by v squared over r. Then you can find the formula for centripetal for you know kilogram. This will be what the whole if you collect the units this and this, 
everything that you need will be kilogram meter per second squared. As we said it like in chapter four, this kilogram meter per second square has a special name known as Newton. Okay. That's, that's after Newton's signal. All right. You're welcome, you're welcome. All right, all right. So therefore, uh, your, your centripetal force formula or equation, um, you can use this directly if, if, it's, if it's like, if it's given like, like that. All right. So uh, is it making sense? <clears throat> uh, so applications, if, you know, as, as we said, it, the applications can be like, um, you know, there's a long range of applications of centripetal force, but, but we can look at like one of the simple ones, for instance, um, what if when a car is traveling in a curved path, okay? Um, what if when the car is traveling in a banked curve, banked means like slightly sloped, uh, and then you know horizontal circles it means like you know in, in a racing track something like that so if it is level if it's level um then you know the this guy is providing the centripetal force and this is of course it's friction the friction between the road and the tire will provide the centripetal force. But what if the car is banked, a little bit banked? Banked means like, you know, as you can see, sometimes, you know, this, the friction force might not be really sufficient. Like, for instance, in some roads, like if it is too curvy and, and especially in highway exits, most of the time, like they bank it a little bit. Especially if there is not enough, enough, um, enough radius, you know, if there is no large curve, so that like you will have the opportunity to slow the car down and, and sufficiently. But in some highway exits, like the exit can be really too tight, and then all of a sudden, like it's a sh there isn't really much space between the next road and the exit. When that happens, you know, just to have you slow down a little faster. And they usually bank the road like this um, but it has also advantage in terms of providing the uh, the centripetal force so in this case the centripetal force is allowed or given or provided by number one there is friction between the road and the tire and there is also another force we call it a normal force the normal force is like the force between uh, between the support and in the car so for instance if you are sitting on on your chair then you are experiencing a normal force or support force that's perpendicular you know to to you uh, so that's what the normal force is so therefore in this particular case it's provided by by the normal force and of course the uh, now now let's try to see like the um, the action of centripetal force and so on and so forth. So if you consider a Ferris wheel, right? Like if you have had an experience um, being on a Ferris wheel or or even like in a roller coaster, pretty much you know, you're going to have a similar kind of experience. So what happens is like if you are on a Ferris wheel and then like the Ferris, the Ferris wheel is like moving the way you see here so uh, if you look at this uh, if you look at this kid um, so at one point he was at the top right at one point he's at the bottom but at one point here right when he was at the top he felt lighter than himself when he was here at the bottom he felt he was heavier than himself okay so why is it happening so has its own reason basically like it it, it can be 
I'll try to interpret it in terms of physics. We're not going to do any kind of calculation, but I want you to at least the next time you are on a roller coaster on a Ferris wheel, you will try to remember that like, ah, my physics teacher tried to interpret this uh, kind of sense. Okay. So, um, so this is what is happening. So those are the forces that the, the, the kid is going to experience. Um, one is, uh, one is the normal force when he was at the bottom and the other one is uh, the normal force when he was uh, when he was at the top so in both scenarios there's a net force that is equivalent to the centripetal force so there will be a net force net force means like in both cases so when he was at the top when he was at the top centripetal force is in this direction if centripetal, if you notice, if centripetal is in this direction. When he was at the bottom, right? So centripetal force is in this direction, isn't it? Which I'll show you in the deck. Here, look at it. Here, centripetal force is in this direction. Right? Because always when it be said about centripetal force, it's always towards or the center. Okay. So they're not equal. Those two centripetal forces are not equal. Uh, but actually, it can be equal, actually, because, you know, if V is constant, then Fc is going to be the same. So there's Fc here and there's Fc there. But the two Fcs, you have them, right? If you find them at different places, so that means like here is your net force. Fc. There is your net force here is at the top, bottom. I mean at the top. It's like this. So, as we said, Fc or centripetal force is not a force by itself. It is it is a roller of a roller of force. So, so now let's 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 consider the bottom scenario. So in this case, if you look at it here, right? If you look at it here, you have the normal force at the bottom, I mean, it's considered bottom, right? It's acting in the upward direction. So what we are considering is like uh, you know, FC, the direction of FC is positive. So that means the direction of FC is positive. It means like in the upward direction is positive in here. Okay. Because we're just trying to play the net force. Then since mg is acting downward then it's going to be minus mg is equivalent to the net force okay but that net force is the same as the centripetal force because the centripetal forces it's a nor that means like what keeps this this kit to make a safe circular motion is because of the normal force, the normal force means the force because of the support of the, the Ferris wheel minus his weight is equivalent to F centripetal. Now your net force is F centripetal. But which force is he feeling experiencing from the chair is what the kid is feeling. You know, remember like the the Newton's third law, like for every action, there is, there is, there is an equal but opposite reaction. So whatever he is feeling is whatever is the normal force. So the normal force at the bottom will be equal to like this. Look, FC, I'm going to take MG to the other side, then automatically it will be a plus, right? So it will be FC plus MG. So you can imagine that the kid at the bottom is feeling the sum of those two forces. That is his weight plus the centripetal force. That's why the kid is feeling like, let's imagine the kid is like, um, so you can imagine F centripetal is 10. I'm just, I'm just making up numbers. 10 newtons and the weight of the kid is 400 
uh, that is mg okay so therefore the normal force that he's going to feel is going to be 110 the normal force he's going to feel is going to be 110 that's why he's feeling heavier than himself but if you consider the other one the direction of fc is positive that means that we're considering this as being positive okay down is positive now if you consider that it's going to be like this mg the weight right minus the normal force which is acting in the upward direction because now the direction of the centripetal force is the, what we, we are taking as positive is equal to the net force again your net force is now your centripetal force then if i take n, cent, n top in this direction it's going to be positive if i take fc to the other side of the equation it's going to be negative then you'll have the following it will have mg minus fc is equal to n top n top is the normal force experienced by the kid when he was at the top of the ferris wheel in this particular case if you use the same scenario it's going to be like 400 minus 10 which is 390 if you consider that 390 newtons of force that he's experiencing because of the normal force which is less than the 400 the weight himself his weight so for that reason he's going to like when he was at the bottom he was experiencing 410 newtons of force when he was at the top he was experiencing 390 newtons of force so as a result he is feeling heavier than himself because you know the support when it's like because of action and reaction kind of experience because the chair is pushing you harder it means you feel heavier than yourself the same experience when you are in an elevator you feel that when the elevator is moving down you feel lighter than yourself sometimes you feel it in your gut like if the if the elevator is like yeah nowadays the elevators really run smooth yes probably but sometimes you may experience you are in an old elevator and then all of a sudden it drops like a foot or it drops like the whole floor in one second what do you feel you feel it in your gut like Oof. that feeling of like you feel lighter than yourself that moment but when the elevator moves up, it pushes you harder, a little harder. Do you feel a little bit heavier than yourself? See, that kind of feeling. Because of that, you know, physics can explain those kind of natural phenomena that you experience every day. That makes it really cool. Okay. So, yeah, then you know it can be expressed in in in, in this kind of uh, this kind of stuff like you know if, if you go through the um your textbook you know you will see uh you'll see a lot of really nice nice things and you can read uh, those things through it okay uh, so i said that like uh, now it's time to try a few examples okay uh, so if you have your your textbook with you that's great but if not i'm going to read it for you and we're going to collect the given parameters and then I will definitely give you like a few minutes to solve those things, okay? So, um, before that, any question? Do you have any question? Anyone? So if you don't have um, if you don't have questions, then what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and solve a few questions uh, from the textbook here. 
Uh, start with E1 from the textbook. I want you to solve E1. E1 states like, um, I'm going to state it for you. So try to get the, the given parameters. A ball is traveling at a constant speed of 4 meters per second in a circle with a radius of 0 0.8 meter. What is the centripetal acceleration of the ball? Traveling at a constant speed of 4 meters per second in a circle of 0 0.8 meters. What is the centripetal acceleration? So as much as possible, please all of you participate. I'm going to give you like two minutes. All right. So go do it. Ninety-nine page page ninety-nine from the textbook. You walk. Twenty twenty. I need more participation, please. So um, the, the the general consensus is like um, twenty. So uh, let's look at it together. So you're given parameters again, preferably you write it that way. It's, it's better for you. Um, so so um, constant speed means not the velocity per se because the velocity, there is change in velocity because of the circular motion. So uh, then the radius is given as uh, 0 0.8 meter. Then what is required? Is centripetal acceleration. Okay, so what is the centripetal acceleration? So. Uh, then you, you pick you pick the equation the right equation to find the solution okay so uh, but you know sometimes like if you list all your given parameters and your proper required parameter you know i can assure you that like you're halfway to the solution basically okay so then you have like a centripetal equals v squared over r then a centripetal will be v squared, which is 4 squared. When you square, always you square the unit as well. So meter per second will be meter squared per second squared divided by 0 0.8 meter, which is the radius. So, you know, one of the units or the m's will cancel out. And when you simplify this, it's going to be 16 divided by 0 0.8, which would be 20 meter per second square you see 
because it's acceleration then acceleration data unit of acceleration is meter per second squared. it's already verified in the calculation as well okay <clears throat> uh, go for e2 uh, go for it e2 so um, and then i'll give you two minutes uh, a car rounds a curve of radius 40 meter at a speed of 18 meter per second what is the centripetal acceleration it's it's pretty much a repetition of uh, what we just did okay so e2 e2 says like you know in, in a curved path with a radius of 40 meter at a constant speed of 80 meter per second then what is a centipede? Nice. Very good. I really like this class very much. Um, so, A centripetal is equivalent to V squared over R, right? That's, that's our equation. Then, A centripetal is going to be 18 squared divided by 40. Of course, you have meter square second square divided by meter yeah perfect very good so yeah the answer is verified which is 8.1 meter per second square awesome excellent then go to e3 go to and try e3 e3 says a ball traveling in a circle with a constant speed of six meter per second has a centripetal acceleration now what's required is different from the last two questions now it's like these use a constant speed of six meter per second and centripetal acceleration is 20 meter per second squared now the question is radius. Two minutes. Got enough answers from you, then let's look at like so, so far, the equation that we know is A centripetal equals V squared over R, right? So, to find R, you need to isolate it, like, you know, in this particular case, you can just simply crisscross it. So, your R can be calculated as V squared over A centripetal. Your V is 6, then, you know, you square it course meter square per second square you divide that by 20 meter per second square right? that's what is going to happen you know then if you cancel the units second square cancels out by second square meter goes with one of the squares of the meters right 
So therefore, your R value is going to be 36 divided by 20, which would be 1.8. Okay. Excellent. Very good. So th 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 the equation is a similar question that you know, would be interested in, in calculating them. Um, then let's go and try to look at E5. E5. E5 says like a 0 0.35 kilogram um, so you've given parameters 0 0.35 kilogram of course it is mass is in, in a circle at the end of a string has a centripetal acceleration a centripetal is given 5 meter per second squared now the question is what is the magnitude of the centripetal force exerted like pretty straightforward what is the centripetal force Take two minutes and up to the right equation and solve it. Now you will just simply choose uh, the formula that says F centripetal is equivalent to mass times acceleration centripetal because both are given. You know, like if instead of um, the velocity, like if it was like velocity, I mean, in, instead of the acceleration, if other parameters were given, then you could go and find it. But, but in this case, everything is given. So 0 0.35 kilogram, Multiply that by the acceleration, five meter per second to square root. So it's like five times five, 25 okay. kilogram meter per second square means Newton. We already mentioned this earlier, okay? All right. <coughs> It's wonderful. Um, then the next one is E6. I want you to look at E6 before we wrap up the topic. Okay. So if you look at E6, it states like a car with a mass of 1500. Mass is 1500 kilogram a car with a mass of 1500 kilogram is moving around a curve with a radius of 45 meter the radius is given as 45 meter at a constant speed of v equals 18 meter per second then question a asks you what is the centripetal acceleration? And question B asks you what is the magnitude of the centripetal force? 
All right. It's like a combination of uh, the last few questions, like, you know, we find centripetal acceleration and then we find centripetal. So first find AC, what would be the centripetal for on an acceleration? Cut it together. So the for 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 part A, just simply apply a centripetal, which is v square over r, right? So a centripetal will be v squared, which is eighteen square. When you square the number, you need to square the unit with that. Okay. So therefore your a centripetal oh, divided by r, the radius is 45 meter. Okay. And of course this meter cancels out and you get your a centripetal. Simplify this 18 squared. Divide that by 45. Yes, that's correct. Meter per second square. Okay. So that's for part A. Likewise, proceed for part B. Simple. Since you already found A center beta, just multiply that A center beta by, by mass. So the mass is given as 1500 kilogram. You multiply that by 7.2 meter per second squared. Then your centripetal force equals 10,800 kilogram meter per second squared, which is equivalent to me. All right. Okay. So, you know, like it's, 